So let's talk about onchocerciasis. This is called river blindness. Here's a picture of a gentleman suffering from onchocerciasis, river blindness. Onchocerciasis, also known as river blindness, is a parasitic disease caused by infection onchocerca volvulus. Uh, it's a nematode, a round worm. The worm is transmitted to humans through the bite of a black fly of the genus Simulium. Because the fly develops and breeds in flowing water, onchocerciasis is commonly found along rivers. So in the human host, the adult nematode, the adult worm, lives in the subcutaneous nodules and produce microfilarii, which are found preferentially in the skin and the eye. So these nematodes, these worms, they will go into the body, become adults, and they'll live in nodules under the skin and make babies. Uh, and those babies, those worm larvae, are called microfilarii. Chronic cutaneous onchocerciasis, which is onchodermatitis, causes pruritus, which is itching, a papular rash, scarring, and lichenification. Uh, lichenification uh, is a skin change causing these white patches, lichens. Over time, the affected skin may begin to sag and atrophy, uh, thin, leading to terms such as hanging groin. Uh, patchy depigmentation, meaning loss of color uh, on the legs, leads to a condition known as leopard skin. Chronic ocular onchocerciasis leads to inflammation of the eye and blindness, hence the term river blindness. Onchocerciasis is endemic in Africa, Yemen, and small parts of Central America and South America. Remember, it stays along rivers. So there's just very small patches in the world where onchocerciasis is endemic. Africa, Yemen, and small foci or fo small focuses, small locations in Central America and South America. The burden of the disease has been reduced by prevention efforts, including control of the fly vector, and that's through insecticide, and mass population ivermectin therapy. Ivermectin is a member of the avermectin class of broad-spectrum antiparasitic agents, which bind selectively and with high affinity uh, to glutamate-gated chloride ion channels. These glutamate-gated chloride ion channels occur in invertebrate nerve and muscle cells. Opening chloride channels prevents the excitatory depolarizing effect of opening sodium channels of the nerve and muscle cells, resulting in paralysis and death of the parasite. So remember, opening sodium channels excites neurons. Opening sodium channels also excites muscle. So opening chloride channels inhibits neurons and muscles because the negative charge of the chloride cancels the positive charge of the sodium. The selectivity for parasites uh, of ivermectin is attributed to humans not having glutamate-gated chloride channels and that the avermectins have a low affinity for mammalian ligand-gated chloride channels. Uh, and then ivermectin does not readily cross the blood-brain barrier in humans. The thing to know about onchocerciasis, river blindness, and the treatment with ivermectin is that the drug is active against tissue, microfilarii, uh, the babies of the onchocerca volvulus roundworm, but the drug does not work uh, against the adult form of the roundworm. Because the adult worms continue to produce microfilarii, until they die, naturally, ivermectin has to be taken once a year for 16 to 18 years. In 1987, uh, the manufacturer of ivermectin, Merck, uh, declared that it would donate the drug free of charge for as long as the drug was needed. 
Something that's confusing for everybody with onchocerciasis is that there is a bacteria involved in this. Uh, the bacteria is endosymbiotic, meaning the bacteria is an important part of the symbiosis with the worm. If you guys think about it, you guys have bacteria inside of your gut that provide you with vitamin K. There are bacteria in your gut that you depend on as a normal part of your life. And so those bacteria in your gut are called endosymbiotic. They live there naturally. You need them to be there. More recently, attention has been focused on Wolbachia organisms, which are endosymbiotic bacteria carried by adult worms and their microfilariae. When the microfilariae die, the Wolbachia symbionts are released, uh, triggering uh, an immune system response that can damage the eyes as well. So part of the damage, the eyes, part of the inflammatory response uh, to the onchocerciasis is caused by the release of these bacteria from the worms uh, when the worms die. Treatment of Wolbachia with doxycycline has been shown to disrupt production by the adult female nematode. In other words, the adult female worm relies on these bacteria for a normal part of her physiology and treating this bacteria interferes with the worm's ability to reproduce. If you recall, doxycycline is a tetracycline antimicrobial agent. It is a 30S ribosomal subunit inhibitor. Remember, uh, ribosomes are proteins that manufacture proteins. So by interfering with ribosomes, we interfere with bacterial protein synthesis. Ribosomes are proteins that decode messenger RNA to form other proteins. And you guys remember this from our second cell physiology lecture. Here's a picture of the young uh, leading the old with sticks. Uh, the older gentlemen are suffering from river blindness uh, and the young gentlemen are leading them around. So if this young man can help uh, this older gentleman uh, deal with onchocerciasis, river blindness, uh, I'm sure there is something uh, that you will be able to do as well.